going to call the February 27th, 2023 um, meeting of the Franklin Public Library Board of Trustees meeting to order. And um, I am present, Maria Imp, uh, Anne Maria Klubgia. Present. Judy, a minute, you're that present. You <laughs> wow, I, I read it off the sheet and I'm like, that is not right. Okay. My name is wrong on the actual uh, minutes as well. Okay, well, that's what I'm reading <laughs> off of right now, so we'll get to that in a minute. Did you do them? No, <laughs> no, Doris did them. I, I got Doris. All right. Mike's here. Mike Karlovitz. Okay. Terry Barris is not here yet. Annalie Bednan is, Annalie is excused this evening. Alan Alexandrovich. Here. Doris Weber. Here. Kristen Wilhelm. Here. Excellent. All righty. Um, Wilhelm. Here. Excellent. All righty. Um, we are, as soon as our visitors get here, um, Brinny and Carrie are going to be giving us um, a presentation on the conference that they attended. Not yet. Conference that they attended. Not yet. Um, Carrie's manning the desk, so Jennifer had to switch out with her. So that's why they're not here yet. Is this so. the conference that was in New Orleans? Yes. Okay. Yep. So. I know. Yes. Yep. So. I know, right? I, I think it was long, hands, long so. enough ago that. Uh, <laughs> they, <sighs> oh no, they had all kinds of issues when they were down there. So. With what? We'll let them tell us. Yeah. With what? We'll let them tell us. Yeah. It's just like all different kinds of stuff on Thursdays, Fridays. Were they doing Mardi Gras when the machine was there? No. I don't. I think it was back. Oh. <sighs> well, I guess we could um, go on to. Um, let's see. Nobody's here. Um, no public comment. Um, Jennifer and I spoke just a few minutes. A Jennifer was over there. Mm -hmm. And then she worked like one year here and then retired. But anyways, there was a $300 donation made in her name. So there we go. Come on in. Um, and I don't know. Here, I can scoot over one. Well, you don't have to. That's Brittany and Carrie. If you don't know them, I'm sure you guys do. So welcome. Hi. Thank you. And Hello. just don't touch the computer and stop the sound. Just don't touch it. Do you want so. me to? Yeah. <laughs> no, then we'd have to like do the meeting again. So oh. here, I'll scoot back so I won't. Well, at least you'd only have valid. to do like do the meeting again. So oh. here, I'll scoot back so I won't. Well, at least you'd only have valid. to do like three minutes of the right. meeting, right? So not too bad. So we are super excited to hear about um, this conference and what you. I don't know, brought back from it. You do, you weren't presenting, were you? No. no, no okay. No. So. Um, I don't know if you want me to. Presenting, were you? No. no, no okay. No. So. Um, I don't know if you want me to. How do you want to do it, Brittany? Do you want me to start? Uh, do you just want to, like, chit-chat about it? No, we'll chit-chat, and then you guys can ask questions and whatnot. Yeah. Okay. Um, super amazing conference. Um, this one actually replaced the ALA Midwinter. It mm -hmm. wasn't a full um, this one actually replaced the ALA midwinter. It mm -hmm. wasn't a full restructure, but some of the things they had changed on it was that um, previously you can buy exhibit hall pass, and that's where you can go meet the authors, get free books, network, and all that. And for this one, only conference attendees can be on the marketplace. Only conference attendees can be on the marketplace floor, which was really nice because that actually cuts down on traffic and congestion. You go to the summer one, you, it's like elbows everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of this, um, what was great about this one was that they had fantastic sessions for networking. Um, Carrie and I both discussed, like when we were looking through the sessions, we would be, what was it, starring like six of them yeah. every hour. Um, yeah, it was tough because um, they started like on the half hour, but they were hour to an hour and a half long session so 
There were, a, a, luckily, a Brittany, Brittany brought this to my attention because I've gotten like mm -hmm. 18 million emails from this conference and I haven't opened any of them. But we can go back and uh, virtually attend the ones that we had to miss nice. because we were in other sessions. Gotcha, that's so that's cool. really, really awesome. And I think that's actually really beneficial because sometimes mm -hmm. it would be like, oh, I sat in one conference for four session for four hours, but I wanted to see all these other ones. Mm -hmm. Some of these other highlights, you can go back. Um, yeah. You can and if, yeah. Oh, and I was going to say some of them that I chose, I was like, why did I choose that one? Right. Like, I wish I would have chose the other one. I wonder if the other one would have been better. Like, mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah. Um, also, the author talks are on there. So if you didn't get to all the author talks, Which, you can. We got to the most important ones, I yes. feel like. Yes. Um, e yeah, so the oh, keynote yeah. speaker on Saturday, uh, Brittany and I were like super stoked about yes. this one. It's so amazing. Um, Ibram X. Kendi, who wrote How to Be an Anti-Racist Speaker, along with Nick Stone, who is a YA author, mm -hmm. and they co-wrote the young reader version of, it's called How to Be a Young Anti-Racist. And they talked about the writing process and just answered well, they just kind of talked about the writing process and, and, and anti-racism. They just kind of talked about the writing process and, and, and anti-racism. And oh, it was just great. Nick Stone was a hoot. She was so <laughs> funny. Oh, my God. I was not expecting her to be so hilarious. I wanted to be her best friend. I did, too. <laughs> um, highlight on that was I had to go to the bathroom halfway through. <laughs> and I'm, I come out of the bathroom and they're setting up this table. And, it, and I'm, I come out of the bathroom and they're setting up this table. And it has all these books and me being nosy, I was like, what's this? And they're like, oh, these are autographed books, but we're going to give them out after the session. And I was like, how do I do this? And they're like, just come back. And so I pretty much kung fu in the hallway <laughs> while watching them, made a friend, because that's my fable, and we high-fived. And then I texted Karen, and I was like, get down here, there's free books. I didn't see it, and then I walked out the door, she's like, oh my God, go over there. And I was like, what? Oh, we did get a free signed book. That's oh, pretty good. So, that was, that was Saturday. Saturday. Um, I'll kind of I'll talk about networking really fast. Sure, and we can talk I didn't about do that. I love. I'm, I like Brittany to talk. did a fabulous a job. Um, Penguin Publisher and I are best friends now. Um, I met Vanessa. Um, she actually told me to message her around April, May. She'll give me a sneak peek into the ALA conference mm -hmm. for the summer. Secretly, kind of hoping that she'll give me exhibit hall summer. Secretly kind of hoping that she'll give me an exhibit hall pass so I don't have to pay the $80 to go to that. Um, Simon & Schuster, I was able to actually connect with their educational uh, library school outreach named Megan. And she actually helped me. We just come, um, emailed back and forth. I'm the chair. She helped me. We just come, um, emailed back and forth. I'm the chair of the Wisconsin Children's Book Award Committee this year. And so I said, hey, do you know of any Wisconsin um authors who have lived was born here because we would like to review them she sent me a couple lists told me to message her and make she'll send me another list for 2023 do we have book lists or is it the book page that we have the adult librarians uh, do use book lists to um for reviews yes um one of their reps told me that if i contact them they would actually talk about coming out here and doing an adult readers party mm -hmm. which i think they do snacks and they set up stuff they kind of just run it is Jeff. Um, they were from Illinois. It was really cool. We connected about how wonderful it was down there. Mm -hmm. um, it's a service that you can get an app on your phone and you scan books and it'll tell you how much they'll buy your books for. 14 cents, three dollars, things like that. They're older. We probably make more money out here. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're older books mm -hmm. or newer books that maybe didn't get past it. Um, we can get three, four dollars. They give us the shipping label for free. We box it up, we send it to them, and they get the money, which I actually thought was maybe a potential revenue generator for down the road. Mm -hmm. We can mm -hmm. look at. Um, found some stuff for Andy. Yeah. Um, found some stuff for Andy. There was book clubs um, where he could do virtual um, live talks with authors. Mm -hmm. um, Future Makers, which Carrie also <laughs> talked with. Yeah. Which is a tinker stem company. I forgot company. to bring that little kit. I meant to grab it off my desk. And it was really cool. And my desk. And it was really cool, and it's affordable. It's, it's like foam. Oh, it's yeah. very affordable. It's kits like already made kits. So instead of us assembling like maker right. kits, we could purchase these kits and have them available. Um, and they have um, 
And not only that, like on their website, they also have instructions. So oh. if you want to do them yourself, you can. Well, authors, um, I actually connected with one about potentially doing a book talk visit around our area. I have to outreach to her. Um, got lots and lots of free books. And couldn't bring them all, so I generously donated them to some avid book readers that were down there. They were very excited. Oh, good. Um, Brenny was a little crazy. For networking, you just shoot me into there and I got you. <laughs> but now into the sessions, which were awesome. Very wonderful. Yeah. So um, I, I think we both discussed and we thought Saturday had the better sessions. Mm -hmm. um, again, it was hard to choose. Um, the one that really stood out to me on Saturday was it's called it was the civic imagination. One that really stood out to me on Saturday was it's called it was the civic imagination station session. And I was like, what the heck is that? Um, the, the description of it sounded really interesting. It was what it was was the presenters. It was a panel, and ALA had given grants out for these civic imaginations, and ALA had given grants out for these civic imagination stations. And actually, I have to do some more research, but Mount Mary mm -hmm. got one of them. Oh, Their okay. academic Sorry. library got one of them. So I want to connect with them and, and see what they did. And I think there was another one. In, but so what they basically were, were um, they took a library, whether it was an academic library or a public library, and they partnered with, and that library partnered with a local artist. And that could be mm. an artist, it could be musician. Um, and they created a, a civic engagement program. So like a series um, in Fayetteville, Arkansas, um, their like public library has a music production studio, sort of like um, Chicago does, mm -hmm. I think Madison does. And they partnered with a local rapper and um, music producer and they held music writing sessions, music production se sessions, um, produce an album. And then it kind of got these musicians in the area to um, create a community of their own. And they, they met through the library and through this program. And now they have this community of collaborators um, that going forward, um, they don't need the program anymore, right? So it, it's a course. And that's basically what this grant is for. So I, I, I while I was in the session, I was just thinking that just made me think of the um, mural that we did with the Indian Community School and how it would be so great to continue to do things like that and work with, with different groups in our um, community, which is part of our strategic planning. I did go to a strategic planning session. Didn't tell me too much new stuff um, that we hadn't already done when we did our strategic plan. Because we are so awesome. Because we are awesome. Um, but already. It was based on segmentation, which I thought was interesting. And Ready. It was based on segmentation, which I thought was interesting, and in how we could use this segmentation data, which is grouping people into yeah. same interest groups. And they suggested working with your city municipality and their data that they have. I'm not sure how much Franklin has. Data that they have. I'm not sure how much Franklin has. So that could be a little bit of a detriment to us, but it was like, you know, finding these different groups and then targeting them. Gotcha. Finding community leaders within those groups, reaching out to them. So, yep. and we kind of talked about that in the strategic plan, yep. but like, I just, oh, yep. and we kind of talked about that in the strategic plan. But, yeah. like, I just, I went because I thought it might bring something new to the, Thank you. but oh. not, not too not much. Too much. <laughs> that was on Sunday. Sunday was a lesser day. Um, let's see what else. Well, we both went to the decolonizing library shelves through the rise. Well, we both went to the decolonizing library shelves through the rise of indigenous children's authors. That's a very long title, <laughs> but it was awesome. Um, a favorite author of mine was speaking, Sherry D. Moline. She's a Matisse. She's from Canada. And who was the oh, other one? Robertson. He had five. <laughs> so he was very attractive. He like couldn't, he like lived in like Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan and he couldn't make it. So he had to like be via Zoom. He drove like for 22 hours trying to get to an airport to get to, to, to us. Yeah. And then he was like, yeah. And then the off. airport was like, there's literally no like you can't. It's always a big snowstorm. Yeah. <laughs> we got delayed. It is a big snowstorm. Yeah. But anyway, it was just very interesting to listen to them talk about um, 
being an indigenous author and writing about indigenous culture and, and the representation of that indigenous culture in children's literature. I thought it was an excellent session. Yeah, anyone like that one? I can talk about, um, I went to one called Developing an Intentional Philosophy for Culturally Responsive Story Times. Um, this was presented by New York City Libraries. Um, this was probably one of my more favorite sessions. Um, what I really liked was that they don't do age levels for their story times. They do it based about because sometimes you have a child who's maybe six but has the maturity of a four-year-old or a three-year-old who's a five-year-old maturity level. Um, that also allows more inclusive inclusivity. Mm -hmm. um, but what was really interesting was that they wanted to do a more intimate, intimate story time which I found very interesting for New York City. I was like, you're in New York City. Like, you're mm -hmm. one of the most populated areas. I can understand why, but they were doing, like, ticketed. Mm -hmm. And we then had a discussion of, like, okay, this is great to have intimate story times, but this is neat. This is great to have intimate story times, but this is now catering to those who have reliable transportation versus those who don't have reliable transportation who might want to attend story times, but they can't get there in time. Um, but there was some really great discussion. I actually generated a, but there was some really great discussion. I actually generated a fun idea of what we're doing this summer called Play-Doh Reads. Um, so I will be doing like a story time. The children will actually have Play-Doh, which is great for OT. Um, and they will be crafting the story with their Play-Doh. Still working out the kinks, but a really story with their Play-Doh. Still working out the kinks, but I'm really excited about that. I could donate some Play-Doh to that. I know. I will take whatever Play-Doh. Um, the other one that was really good was No More Neutral, marketing um, to position your library in challenging times, especially given what's happening out in the community right now. Um, out in the community right now. Um, this was actually really fascinating. They were talking about you bring the community in make them part of this it's, it's not rocket science but you're like oh that makes sense like hey come read our policy um read um recommend books for us to purchase to look mm -hmm. at there was a wisconsin youth um librarian who got sued for reading a story time um because it was considered pandering obscenity to a minor but because of the policy they were able to get the charges dropped, and I was just like, oh. Where did that happen in Wisconsin? I didn't have time to look it up. Okay. She thought it was Wisconsin. Oh, maybe. But I mean, it's still t terrifying across the board. Mm -hmm. I told Sarah that, and she's like, this is why sometimes I read animal books. <laughs> um, but it's one that really talked about some of those um, kind of scary, hairy, but how libraries are not supposed to be neutral. We're supposed to be fighting for all. And I was like, that's a great message. And talked about how some libraries actually position themselves, especially in communities that are maybe a little bit more challenging. Ooh. I'm watching this. We're at 18 oh, minutes. We're at 18 now. minutes, okay. Unless you want to stay. Yeah, unless you want me to. I think that's good. You can read my but summary. I, was say I can you have email it to you. Sure. If you yeah. want. Yeah. It's not very. Exciting. Is that a. I assume you had to submit something then back to Jennifer and or something we, like that to, or for the grant we have to send right. a summary. A summary. Oh, grant. We have right. to send right. a summary, a summary. Oh, right. summary of, yeah. of what we learned. Yeah. yeah. And Jennifer, why don't you get a copy to Jennifer and then she can send it All right. to us. All right, sounds good. That would be and awesome. as you were talking about different things and just getting ideas about doing things wherever it fits mm -hmm. into the strategic plan or if it's like. Oh, into a strategic plan or if it's like okay this is something that maybe you're not going to do you know this year but definitely this may be something that we're, we're going to need to have money. the budgeting time we can say okay let's add these extra dollars because in order to do in order to do this next year we're going to have to have something that maybe you can't or you don't want to write a grant for and just say, okay, it's going to be pretty much long-term operational, so let's just go ahead and fit it into programming or community average or what, whatever it is that mm -hmm. ends up being. Right. Right. All right. But I'll donate your Play-Doh. Okay, sweet. <laughs> yeah. We're going to need, I, Sarah and I talked about it, I'm like, I think this is going to be popular. Sure, I think sure. this is 
Play Doh, you just oh, mentioned yeah. Play Doh, and parents are going to be like, yes. Yeah. All the adults will just remember. Well, I mean, anytime you can add some tactile stuff mm-hmm. to, mm-hmm. Yeah. to learning, whether it's holding something or whatever. Yep. Well, thank you so much. But I would love to see your. Okay. You can have these. Sure. I I did make one change, and I I forgot to write the other author's name in because I didn't know what it was in Brennan. I I forgot to write the other author's name in because I didn't know what it was in Brennan. Okay. But it was Dave. I'm pretty sure it's David Robertson. Richardson. I think so. Mine are very like one sentence, so I can always give you a little bit more. Well, you don't have to put any time into it. I can also send you my brief summary. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, we are going to move on um, until Jennifer joins us. We're going to just continue here. So we're, um, we are on agenda item number five. Actually, before we go on to agenda, does anybody have any comments on? Okay. Then we'll go on to approval of the minutes, agenda item number five for the January 23rd. So first of all, we will make the name correction, which is funny because I'm assuming you used a template. So it was yeah. like in 2018 or something. Okay. Like, oh, gotcha. Yeah, that we've done in the last five years. There we go. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes with change. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Alan, um, any other questions or comments? Um, did you have anything in the minutes, Jennifer? We made one change to Judy's name. Was um, was there anything else that you had seen? Oh, yeah, now I see that. Yeah, I know. No. Or no. Okay, then all in favor? Aye. Anybody Aye. opposed? Motion carries. All righty. Um, we did discuss the... Unless there was something super major about that donation, I mentioned it. So the the let's do approval of the vouchers and invoices first, so we can have two months in a row where we do it right. <laughs> I can't handle that. I know, right? <laughs> uh, okay, look at fund fifteen invoices. Um, there's a large one from Mickless, but that that's scatter Mickless, but that that's scatter. Yeah, there was nothing that. Jumped up, well, maybe the very last one, the Sigmatic, which is new chairs mm-hmm. for the employees here, but we've been talking about that too. So, uh, really, nothing out of the ordinary. So, I'm looking for approval of the invoice out of the ordinary. So, I'm looking for approval of the invoices for $74,825.28. So moved. Do I, is there a second? No, I second. Doris seconded. Any other questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed or abstentions? Motion carries. And then Fund 16. Fund 16. Uh, again, we had the Sigmatic for chairs. Mm-hmm. Uh, that brought the total up, but everything else was basically the standard operating mm-hmm. things that we go through. Is there, yeah, because no, the budget. Because that's what we had budgeted in each one. Okay. Okay, so I'm looking for a motion to accept the invoices for Fund 16 uh, in the amount of $9,531.07. Mike, go ahead and second. I'll second. Judy, all right. Any other questions or discussion? Motion, oh, all in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. All right. Okay, the treasurer's report. Uh, All right. Okay, the treasurer's report. Uh, I got it out to everybody, and the only thing I would ask is, do you all want to receive it in advance, or would you rather just wait to get it in the packet, and I'll just get it to you? I like reading the summary ahead of time. Okay. Because yeah, otherwise, I'm looking for detail. I like reading the summary ahead of time. Okay. Because yeah, otherwise, I'm looking for detail. <laughs> I think his question is he emailed it to us uh, two days before we got the packet. Do we want it before the packet, or is the packet good enough? Packet's good enough. Does everybody agree with that, or anybody? Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank I'll, you for, yeah. She'll send it to Send it to Jennifer, Jennifer in time. And 
I was sending it to everybody because I just didn't know yeah. who the secretary would be. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> All righty. But I think we should keep that in mind. Oh. <laughs> I think I'm going to keep my back against the wall. <laughs> okay. Um, my report for January, which is 8.49% of the year, Fund 15. Um, I still think there's something amiss with the net investment earnings. Amiss with the net investment earnings. At 17.35% of budget, and we were told higher interest rates. Um, but it was, in the financials, it was like $954. And last year, you know, we had several months that were higher than that. So either we missed it on when we were budgeting it, months that were higher than that. So either we missed it on when we were budgeting it, or what? But that's a number they give us. That's, that's a number they give number. us. Yeah. 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 So. Well, we don't have anybody's video. <laughs> okay, well, we're still blaming it on the city, and we're not taking responsibility for our budget. On that line, I don't. As long as it's not red. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Very good point. Uh, so the revenues were 94.69% of the budget because we got the tax money already, and right. the expenditures were 6.28% of the budget. Mm -hmm. So we are looking really good now. <laughs> holiday pay was kind of higher. They include both legal holidays and personal holidays. I guess that's something that can float into any month. And I've never heard of personal holidays. I always thought that was personal days. I call them personal and, days. And yeah. they've thrown in holidays. The holiday pay. Mm -hmm. So it's in a sense, if they have a holiday, nobody's working. Right. It's more personal. Yeah. So whatever, that's what made the it explanation, look yeah. that high. Yeah. Uh, everything else was pretty good. Fund 16, total revenue 17.26% of budget. <laughs> <coughs> Interest on investments, again, I won't drag that out, 92.2% mm -hmm. of the budget. Did, did no, you, it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> Still wasn't me, two okay. months in a row. No, it was an uh, <laughs> e-commerce check that we get on a quarterly basis, which tends to make mine jump up every January, yeah. April. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, miscellaneous rate, 42% of the budget. Because we are now taking the foundation reimbursements and putting it in miscellaneous revenue. In the past, those monies went into donations, which just distorted donations. So right. now we're going to distort the miscellaneous <laughs> revenue. Something. But, it, but it's miscellaneous. That's the, right. If you're going to distort something, that's a great choice. Okay. And, but it's miscellaneous. That's the, right. If you're going to distort something, that's a great choice. Okay. Total expenditure is 5.64% of the budget. Everything else as anticipated. And the cash register report is... Perfect. As of course. Cash register report. Cash register report. I did put together that report where I, you know, month by month. Mm -hmm. But it was one month and I thought it was almost a waste of time to do it because well, it's like looking at the financial statement. But it's there now. The only other thing I thought about doing was when I do January and maybe February. The only other thing I thought about doing was when I do January and maybe February, leave March, April, May, and June uh, through the end of the year there. So as we're, we're doing this, to look at comparative numbers. Right. This month versus how mm -hmm. did we do in other months. Mm -hmm. And we should leave last year in there for the first oh. two, three months. And we should leave last year in there for the first oh. two, three months. And then float it out of there because now we're getting... Just bump a month year. out every mm -hmm. month, maybe, yeah. to always have a 12-month. Um, and 12-month moving. Yeah. How helpful would it be to have the same? Is it better to compare just the previous month than it would be, what? like, February to February, 2023? Well, if you compare January to January, we're going to see things like all the people who got raises. So labor is oh, just going to be higher. Right. And yeah. there's going to be everything... A bunch of things moving like that, but yeah. otherwise, oh, yeah. that, that you know, like certain bills that they only pay certain maintenance contracts, yeah, like certain uh, contracts, and all those mm -hmm. would be compared to the same time. Right, right. Like the Mick was mm -hmm. uh, huge hit. Mm -hmm. Always hits in that month. Right. Um, I mean, not that. How many ways do you want to do it, right? Right. That's well, the that's other what question I was thinking, too. Like yeah. Maybe that's just like, like this is helpful. 
that right. would be helpful. I right. mean, <laughs> right. maybe that's just like yeah. a, something that we look at every six months or something, yeah. or yeah. quarterly. Well, that still is our nominal. Yeah. But maybe we just do that if we have a lot of questions. Our nominal. Yeah. But maybe we just do that if we have a lot of questions. Well, the, the easiest thing is I, I put together last year already. Right. I so could have just, just have to bring it up. Bring it up, and then you. I suppose I have all of last, you know, I have last year's too. So if I have a question, I can just go to my files. All of last, you know, I have last year's too. So if I have a question, I can just go to my files and look at it. Yeah, never mind. Sorry. If something seems wrong. strange, we can always ask for information yeah. from you. If we don't, all if we can't. Well, we have to ask if it's something strange well, it, we all ha we have well, it. Us. Yeah, if we can't. We have to ask if it's something strange well, shows up. It, we all ha we have well, it. Us. Yeah, if we can't find it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> that takes me to the credit card statement, which is on. I don't know what page that is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was my fault. <laughs> <clears throat> did you do that on purpose? <laughs> he did that on purpose. That, that jerk. Jennifer forgot to put page numbers on the packet. So I mean, the credit card summing. You scroll online and say, oh. <laughs> if, I, if I knew how to use a computer. I would just sign in. Good, excellent. In my papers. And the credit card report really didn't have anything that jumped out too much. The, the conference, some dollars put there. Um, but everything else was in line. And that conference will be, will be ready. They have to. They have, and to Brandy have to submit this. Yes. Submit the same okay. thing that they talked about tonight. Gotcha. Yep. To get the money. That's what I figured, but I couldn't remember because I know there was something. I think they did airline tickets. They did couple, airline tickets uh, and the conference itself last was, year. This yes. year, this okay. 939. That's what I'm thinking. Yep. And okay. Paper food ourselves. We're so excited to go. Oh, good. Okay. All right. I think that ends my report. Unless there any are questions. questions. All right, thank you, Alan. All right, we're moving on to agenda item seven, business. And the next items in our Franklin Public Library State Annual Report and the statement concerning system effectiveness. And we do have to approve those, approve those separately. So Mike, would you tell us what page numbers? I guess it doesn't really matter. Either you have them numbers, I guess it doesn't really matter. Either you have them in your packet or whatever. It's right after the credit card statement. It's right, no, I know that, but I'm trying to I'm trying to find the end point, but it's okay. Yeah, it's I have a question. Yes. So we had asked answer some of these questions about COVID. I think we discussed last year. So But in here, they asked staff reassigned during COVID-19, and we said no. And I thought that there were some reassignments. No. And I thought that there were some reassignments that so, we didn't necessarily want to do, but the city was like, we needed to provide help or something. So a staff reassignment was, because I clarified that last year, was when, for, I give an example of Milwaukee Public Library. Mm -hmm. Their staff actually. For, I'd give an example of Milwaukee Public Library. Mm -hmm. Their staff actually worked for the health department the entire time the library was closed, okay. doing yeah. um, doing call COVID calls. Okay, so it's not the temporary assignment where they were so actually like what we hours actually hours did. The... What we actually okay. did was not much. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure. Yeah, I I clarified that. I think it was last year. Yeah, I remember we clarified yeah. several things last year. Mm -hmm. So. All right, so looking at the first one, the state annual report. Obviously, these are numbers that, you know, Jennifer submitted. These were put in. Information was correct, like, you know, your name, Our, your address, your answers. It's just copy right over from, you know, what we have here, but just But still, yeah. Okay. No, it's always good to check that. Well, and technically, it's Judith, not Judy. Oh. It's J-U-D-I, right? How? Oh. 
I guess I just um, noticed something mm -hmm. in this, and it would be on this page that's uh, landscape view, yeah. the programs. Yes. That are six to 11 programs. Mm -hmm. um, I was that are six to 11 programs. Mm -hmm. um, I was surprised at how many fewer we have for that age group. And I'm not, this has absolutely nothing to do with the information on the report. No. But I just yes. would like to, you know, put that out there to mm -hmm. you and your staff. That it, mm -hmm. and I, I know that I had seen it, put that out there to mm -hmm. you and your staff. That it, mm -hmm. and I, I know that I had seen it. Maybe it's repeated in a couple of the, you know, places in this report that that age group, mm -hmm. those, those, that age group does not seem to be served by our programs mm -hmm. as much. I mean, 17 seem to be served by our programs mm -hmm. as much. I mean, 17 number of programs compared to 157 for birth to five. And I do remember when my girls were that age, that was, there was a sudden drop in what was available to them as a pro mm -hmm. in a pro for programming too but I think um, part of that's just because they're in a pro for programming too but I think um, part of that's just because they're in school well I agree but then look at young adults are in school and they have 22 you know there was 22 programs mm -hmm. um, that's not a big jump from seven it's not a big jump it's not a big jump but I wouldn't you know necessarily use that and and attendance programs but I just I just noticed that and I just you know that is more than one a month, obviously, but um, just well, we have talked about that. Yeah, okay. We are aware that that is, but part of it too is that they plan all these programs for that age group and then don't. And that—that well, that was my que that was my follow-up question. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So yeah. I just want to make sure. Those ages are when all the kids are doing their sports and mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. just... Yep. But yes, that has been a staff. Yeah, and I know that. Um, like a lot of the young adult, well, and even for the young ones too, they have the kits to take to targeting them with specific things just they, for that age group. And that's so. Do that. you have the one that's like once a month or whatever? Yeah. Because okay. they have the sensory sprouts yeah. and then they have one that's. Yep, they have one that's for the older. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to make, make sure that, yeah. if, okay. that I'm just wondering if it was that reason that they. If you look at the per program, the 6 through 11 is the highest. Because I think the programs that they do do are, well are attended. Well, you know, well, um, well, of course. Right. Their attendance is high because like, they're well attended. But is it well, because if we had 10 more programs, would it bring down the attendance per, per program right. substantially? Or would we just see that we can reach kids right. with additional programs? Yeah. 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 Oh, good. Yeah, I don't know the yeah. answer to that. We, no. We'd only know by trying to do something. Right. Yeah, I don't know the yeah. answer to that. We, no. We'd only know by trying to do something. Right. So. I know they do a lot during spring break for that. Age right. Group. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and obviously, maybe not as much during the summer as we could. So. Yeah. Well, I just that was one thing I noticed. But okay, so I uh, need a motion. But okay, so I uh, need a motion. How do we say this? Um, the other one is written out. To Can I mention something? Else? Absolutely. Alan brought up a really good point. The interlibrary loans, and sorry, I don't know what page it's on. <laughs> it's after the public services COVID page. There's a items. It's after the public services COVID page. There's a items. There's an interlibrary loans items loan provided to, and then items received from. It's like halfway down the page. Yeah. Correct. Under library services. Yep. So those are when we pull, like when we get books and we pull books off the shelf and send them yep. out. That's not like when we get books and we pull books off the shelf and send them yep. out. That's not the reciprocal borrowing. I mean, it's part of reciprocal borrowing. But, but it's, it's our own internal holds for our own library. All, uh, and like going out and bringing items in through the delivery. Gotcha. It's not counting the people who come from Greendale out here. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, okay. So I just wanted to point that out. That was it. Any other questions on the first part of the report? So then I need a motion to approve the 2022 Franklin Public. Allen. Second. Mike seconds. Um, any 
Any other questions, comments? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed or abstentions? Okay, and then this other page, it's a single page, and again, um, we, I am, let's see, that statement right there, statement that the, we, the, we think the Milwaukee County Federated Library System provided effective leadership to meet the needs of our library. That's how that, correct, Jennifer? Yes. So, I'm looking for a motion. I so move. Okay. And Dora seconds. Uh, any other questions about that one? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed or abstain? Okay. All righty, good. Um, and then the next agenda item is a pass, possible action, and well, discussion and possible action on a budget amendment for the 2023 budget of fund 16 moving 6000 from fund 16 to fund 15 or from no from fund, fund 16 to yes 16 or from no from fund, fund 16 to yes <laughs> what it says i'm going to let jennifer well explain basically this. be Based adding 6000 to the current budget so that for any can buy sensory kits i make Carrie, a motion we do that Carrie can buy okay uh, I will. Uh, I will second. Any questions about that? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. All right. Agenda item eight. Old business. Jennifer, you want to give us a security project? Yes. And, and in the since the departure of the city administrator, and he is basically taking the one. That they were trying to do he felt too much so he took it he's breaking it out into three parts one part of it would be the city and they're already he's already meeting with vendors he's actually arranged a, a tour of the library however he told me that you know it just done by June 30th but he assures me it would be done this year so he assures me it would be done this year. Okay. So when I read this, I thought, Bless you. what? What about the plan? Like I want to hear of the plan. Like maybe I want to hear of the plan. Like maybe it, the whole project won't be finished by the June thirtieth. But like the plan should be, that's plenty of time to have contracted the plan and things be signed and just maybe the work not be done. Why, why could it not be figured out and signed and just waiting for the work to be done? It's kind of how I feel about it. That's still a long time away. I can have him come in. Maybe I can see if he can come to the next library board meeting. Mm -hmm. Why do we have to be coordinated with CEO? And vendor. Well, it, yeah, but we keep kicking this project. Right, it keeps going a month out, a month out. So can, can we just do it? So Jennifer and I met about this, and part of the discussion we had was how did the staff feel about a huge issue? Am I correct? Their issue with security is the or with mental illness. Right. A lot. Right. And so problem. when we're talking security system, I think we're talking about connectedness to the city and cameras and things like that. And that maybe, yeah. you know, so as far as urgency from the staff, okay. Um, the second thing is um, we talked about the fact that um, the previous city administrator maybe wasn't moving it quickly enough. And I think Jim has already moved the project forward two months, what she had failed to do in a year. So I think we're hopeful, um, or there seems to be more, more movement on it. Um, and again, I think it is, is um, he, he has infrastructure, being the IT guy, he has, infra he has infrastructure, being the IT guy, he has infrastructure 
not infra software, I don't want to say infrastructure, he has things already in place for the project. So for us to go on our own, we would have to, you know, have somebody create all that for us from square one, whereas Still he has me. already done some of that. Somebody create all that for us from square one, whereas Still he has me. already done some of that. Well, wait, so. <laughs> And he's working on that too. That's a separate issue. That's a separate issue. To me, that is. That's a separate issue. That's a separate issue. To me, that is. If I was here, that would be an employee's safety. He thinks it's an OSHA violation. Well, and right. But that's and, separate from this one. Yeah, that's a, that's one of the things. <laughs> well, I'm, not, I'm pretty sure I'm the one who made the motion. Well, I'm. Not, I'm pretty sure I'm the one who made the motion. Uh -huh. That when we cut down the cost of the building, that any extra funds, and I think it was like, I don't know, up to $300,000, was supposed to be used for security. That had to have been five years ago or something. I don't know. I mean, the mayor was around when that was supposed to. Right, right. It might have just left. The... So that's a long time ago. That was before Rachel left. Rachel was still the director. So remind us again what he is, he's bringing someone in to. T to look at the library, and when is that happening? He hoped to, because they came and looked at City Hall. If they come in this week, and they, they should be able to get a plan to him, mm -hmm. is that's my I understanding. Think, and that's so, why I think as long as we keep saying, like, okay, yeah. but we still want to hit this deadline that we have in right. our plan. Yeah. Like, we don't want to just be like, okay, yeah, whatever. Like, no, our board is really pushing us. We really want this deadline hit. I think that'll just ensure that he'll be like, all right, all right. Like, it'll stay at the top of the pile. Right. You know what I mean? Because I do think he's already making movement, which is a great sign. But also what happens if, like, their stuff comes back and it's something better? Then have, how long have we wasted without start? Like, hopefully this will work for us together. But are they going to all of a sudden... Well, I think one thing we don't we understand is how big of a gap do we have between this place being unsecure and wherever it's going to get to when this work is done? Like, where are we? Where are we? Like, right now. Well, and what is, also, what is this going to mean for us? What is, what is the security that we're getting and for what price and who's paying for it and I'm wondering if they could do, you know, if the holdup is going to be City Hall. They could do, you know, if the holdup is going to be City Hall. Could we just get, uh, could they yeah, that's do right. our part first? Could we use, I mean, why can't we get it done? That would be my they question. Use the same vendor or whatever, just make yeah. us the priority on the schedule. Right? Yes, right. because we have a June 30th. And why can't they get it done by June 30th? That was, yes. right. because we have a June 30th. And why can't they get it done by June 30th? That would be my question. Right. If, these, if they're coming in now, why can't it be done by June 30th? And if it's because of city, then we want ours. Right. We're, we're ready to do ours. No so. well, we're, we're, right. And especially if we're going to be paying for it separately. Same right. And especially if we're going to be paying for it separately. Then, yeah, why right. couldn't we? Has this gone right. out to bid? Is it going out to bid? It hasn't gone out to bid. No, it's just oh, it hasn't gone out to bid. So, what you want them to do is you want to make sure they make an alternate bid that separates the library yes. from the full bid. Like they did with the parking lot. Yes. From the full bid. Like they did with the parking lot. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Well, why don't you. Um, but I'm also curious why is this the one company, too? Oh, no, he's. he's he he's does have still, to say, Oh, okay. they'll put a bid document out. So okay. There'll be companies bidding on it. I think he's just having companies come in. I mean, I'm happy that he's asked about the need. It. All of the planning to be done <laughs> still by the end of June, and then we're just waiting for it to be put in place. But I don't see why. Well, the bid back is over at council. It's a big thing to go out to bid. Well, let's see what happens. I mean, because you feel it's better if he just comes in. And you can ask him yeah, all these questions. You know, he's then maybe that might be best. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if you wanna mm -hmm. invite that or invite him yeah. already, that would be fine. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that update. 
All right. Um, I am the one that requested, Jennifer and I met to go over the bylaws and put them together and go through all of our notes. And um, I hit a point where I was not comfortable with the notes that we had taken and understanding. So um, that with the notes that we had taken and understanding. So um, that's why we didn't, well, that's why we're not voting on the bylaws because I am asking for clarification. Um, and that gives you guys all a chance to see these also. Um, but my, my, so the bylaws, um, any change, so the bylaws, um, any changes that Jennifer and I went over um, and added, subtracted, whatever, reworded, are in the board, and mine aren't in color, but that's okay. Yeah. No, it, it's just, I yeah. have my color. But that's okay. No, it, it's just, I have my printer. Oh, editing, we can see what was You guys can see on your computer. Oh, I guess you, okay. Which is fine. I think, I think everybody. No, um, this one has color. Okay, perfect. Um, so my question was the wording on meeting attendance right on the very first page of the bylaws. Um, I was not clear what we had put into place for voting during a meeting and if we feel like we need to state that clearly. Clearly, So I was hoping, Judy, you would have an This is pretty much what we talked about. I, thought it was I know, I know, exactly but I am about. confessing to all of you, I am not clear about this. Does um, participating in the board meeting include voting? We cannot go into uh, trustees participating via telephone. No. no um, all votes taken during a meeting where a trustee attends by telephone or video conference shall be by roll call vote. Mm -hmm. Right. I still vote, but yeah. But it was had to be by roll call, so you can know, if you know exactly yeah. who voted. Right. Okay. And okay. Make sure it wasn't somebody like in the background voting and saying yes or whatever. Oh yeah, we had all that. But again, like I said, I was um, I was not clear. I was not sure that this was clear enough about that's the voting. Why, so I, that's my thought was that they were voting. Alan, what okay. Did you guys do is for a well, school. Well, Deborah got it. But yeah. This is what this I would be. Yeah, I know we based yeah. this off of what Judy gave that, us. Yeah, that's what I understood was okay. that you were there to be able to vote. But we had to do it by roll call to know who voted how. Okay. That's what I've used in the past. All right. Thank you. So we have a sneak peek at this, and then I think the, the procedure is then this has to be mailed out to us. Mm -hmm. And so next meeting, we will be voting on this. Yeah. So. Okay. So if there's, and so next meeting, we will be voting on this. Yeah. So. Okay. so if there's point, anything point, else, uh, yeah, there's points of other <coughs> points of clarification, we were using two or three sets of notes to put this all together. A statute, it's a statute. So the N words in the Wisconsin State statute, it's not a statute, it's a statute. So it should be S T A T U T E. Spell, spell check probably did not catch it. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> that's not even a change, so it's apparently in our old ones, but FYI, that should be fixed. Okay, where was it? Uh, end of Article 2, Section 1. It's the last. Uh, end of Article 2, Section 1. It's the last. Statue, yeah. see it. <laughs> statue. Good catch. That's why she's the lawyer. I know, right? Uh, All right. Obviously, we have one more month then on that, so you'll be able to look at it again. So I can email it. Am I? Am I? Yes, yes, because that's in there that. Um, it ha it, you're right. It will does not have to be uh, paper mail. It will be emailed. Well, we're going to make do the update, and then yeah. it's, I think it should be emailed separately from the agenda. Uh, so it's clear yes. that it's a bylaw. Yeah. A bylaw. Or and it has to be done ahead then. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, All righty. We will move on then to agenda item nine. Any council action related to the library, Kristen? Only the uh, issue she said she wasn't ready, and um, I called her and she said, yeah, just table it, so I made a motion to table it. I was ready, and I was going to 
quite a pushback and argument that that uh, motion is not achieved. To you have to say, hey, that's not the motion. <laughs> Having said that, my motion is to, uh, the exact words, yeah. but to table it until she has she the information. Mm -hmm. And insisted that it would be in here. I don't know what's going on. It's just like going way, way off. So all I know is that they didn't hear it. So mm -hmm. they come back. He goes, he goes, okay, so the motion is to table until it's achieved. And I said, well, it might be ready for <laughs> And it is. I mean, yeah. will you give us an update on your yeah. report? Okay. Then we'll we'll wait. You give us an update on your yeah. report. Okay. Then we'll we'll wait for that. All right. Thank you for <laughs> your, your efforts there, Kristen. So, okay. Um, and then Annalie is at a function tonight, so she's not here. Um, as far as she's not here. Um, as far as a report from me, I don't know if any of you else got these little mailers, if you noticed in your little value pack, whatever they call. Did you see this? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is a very fun little marketing thing that um, Nicholas that. did. Mm -hmm. One side was about all the things the library can do for you, and then the other side focused on the educational databases and other, other um, things that the library offers for education and career stuff. So I thought that was very nicely done. Um, lots of weather decisions this month. And looked over the bylaw stuff. Um, and met regarding the security stuff. Um, so yeah, that was it. And then um, on our master calendar, um, this month is the month where we start looking at um, new board members possibly or looking at um, new board members possibly or the you know the switch over in the summer and Annie your term is up this summer in July and it so is. it is we looked it up Jennifer looked it up and so is Terry's so What a memory! Holy yeah, cow! Like, so yeah, Where were you when you were approved? <laughs> well, that's hilarious. Okay, so Annie and Terry are up, and that's you know. So, dependent on their decisions, we may or may not need to start thinking about new board members. Hopefully not, but you know. <laughs> okay. Um, but I did want to give you an update on cleaning. So on the fifteenth, I got the contract from Dust Free, the proposal, I should say from dust free and it was more than city hall <laughs> so i questioned it because i'm like city hall's a lot bigger with a lot more offices and so bob tesh went back so i said we got to figure some strategies because you know we'd be paying more than we were paying for ryan i think so no, I don't know. So I can ask Bob Tash. I think they just don't like to vacuum, and they'd have to do more vacuum. But they here. have to mop <laughs> floors over there. Oh, that's worse. I mean, here you have to mop some so floors. <laughs> no, I don't. I went back to them, and they're like, okay, let us look at it, and we'll get back to you. So they got me another forward. proposal last Wednesday, which is why I wasn't ready for the common council meeting. Yeah. And they came down like $300 a month. A little <laughs> bit more on Ryan, but because they're paying for janitorial supplies, it's probably gonna be less in the long I I sent everything to the mayor he's working up the budget amendment and he'll take care of that part of it so so, so it won't be, be like tabled next year, year. Year. Is there a problem? Why don't no I said yeah. <laughs> hey <laughs> yeah. I do love my Roomba you <laughs> <laughs> love my Roomba <laughs> Cameras on all of those. Right, right, there we go. <laughs> nice. Probably saw it. Wow. Two for one. We found all those missing DVDs. They're really under the shelves. Two for one. We found all those missing DVDs. They're really under the shelves. The Roomba found them. Found them. So then the part.
parking mm. lot. I, I did want to point out the parking mm. lot because I did. And then the parking mm. lot. I, I did want to point out the parking mm. lot because I did attach the email from Tyler. I was going to ask you, is, yeah. what kind of lights do we have that are like, are they LEDs? They are LED. They were switched over about five years ago. Oh, okay. So, so no um, changing that to blink those lights. No. Oh, okay. So, so no um, changing that to blink those lights. No, we just maybe need a few more. I mean, I'm not talking about doubling them, but just a few more mm -hmm. strategically sure. placed. Yeah. I think the east side of our building, now that we've got the locker over there, even though the locker has a light, it would be nice to have a light over there. Yeah, it's very good. So we could work with DPW on that. Um, <clears throat> so the hope is that the contract will come back around 290000 The bid will come back around 290000 is what they're hoping. Quite a bit less than the 450 we have budgeted. That yeah. they had initially. Well, especially if it's going to be including other things. Not including. Everything. It's not including the cement work next to the building. It will include the cement, the gutter, the curb. Stuff where you would be doing it with bigger things, possibly. Yeah. So that issue that we have up here, we'll probably have to do separately. Do separately. Yeah. yeah. But that was that originally in the original amount, though. No. That was not. That was something that we brought up extra last year. On top of that. Yeah. So I think, personally speaking, um, the um, I think we need to, um, you know, we had this, the city had this whole IRS report done, and I think we really need to look at those items and really make sure it's stuff that needs to be done on the timeline that we want it done and not just because I think that was a very broad type of uh, survey and assessment and maybe it's not 100% accurate for our needs and budget and timeline. So, um, so that's the um, so that's the the parking lot and then I wanted to mention today with all the rain and the snow melt we did have a baby leak in the book nook but it didn't like it did wasn't a gusher but it you didn't can, you gush can, all over the no, computers Bob, touches, Bob is gonna gush her but it you didn't can, you gush can, all over the no, computers Bob, touches, Bob is gonna go up tomorrow <clears throat> and take like a it's a very small leak you can go see and the it. The leak is small, but yeah, I can, might you can be coming see from that a it's huge It's probably pool. right where the Claire Story wall comes down, and yeah, I can, you can be coming see from that a huge it's probably pool. right where the Claire Story wall comes down and meets with the flashing and the yeah. So he's gonna go up and take a look at it tomorrow. But I just wanted to mention that because that happened today. I'm actually kind of happy that the more yeah. I mean that was a lot bigger. of rain that came down, and we that the. More. Yeah, I mean that was a or lot bigger. of rain that came down and a lot of snow that was still up there. The day and, just like, yeah, I do. I walk through the library with like my head up. <laughs> I always holding an umbrella. Right. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Right. So yeah, that was. I don't think so. Hey, I heard a little update on the foreign language books oh, right yeah. before I came. The person that takes care of the families where English is their second language within the, a bunch of different families in the community that are going to help her select and find where to purchase mm -hmm. books and then also to make sure that they're good translations and like what kind of things that they would like to see and make sure that they're the proper languages that we are needing mm -hmm. in the community it's just kind of a good because now they're going to tell their friends and other people right. that are also the second and, right, English right. is their second thing so I think it's going to be a good way to involve the community in our new project at the library and it's good because Carrie was kind of like where do I go where do I start mm -hmm. with Carrie was kind of like where do I go where do I start mm -hmm. with yeah, yeah. yeah so and then between that and Culture Fest the library being there I think it's like going to help really grow that community within our library on top of that. So it's pretty, pretty exciting.
exciting. Because I see a lot of that is pretty, pretty exciting. Because I see a lot of the kids in the story times, and I just think how difficult it must be for those families that English isn't their first language, and they're doing all the right things, taking their kids, or kids are just learning the language as they're here at story times, and as they're just immersed in learning the language, as they're here at story times, and as they're just immersed within our school, mm -hmm. and how difficult it must be for them to come to a library, and yeah, they're they're learning English too, but like to be able to actually go and pick out a, a book with, with mm -hmm. your own language and be able to take that home and just feel that take that home and just feel that comfort. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to be a really nice. Well, thing to that. dovetail on that too, maybe even having multi generational right story yeah. times where you have everybody comes in, and so they they all get a little bit experience. So it's not because it's always ends up sisters interpreting for mom, for mom and, dad, and dad, you know, and... Yep. Yeah, definitely. Yep. And it's, when I just did Valentine's with my kids, these, even more so, right now in the high school, there's a lot of diversity, but it's really within our younger kids. Yeah, absolutely. Their classes have so much more diversity. Mm -hmm. They don't have near the diversity that my younger kids have. They, their mm -hmm. classes, they're closer to, you know, the... German is closer to the minority right. in their classes, yeah. so yeah. it's um, mm -hmm. it's just definitely something that we need here at the library, and it's pretty exciting to that. Yeah. yeah. To follow up on that, so Mike, you raised an interesting point. I mean, we have the English as a second language in the school. Do we provide any programs in the library about teaching people who maybe are out of school, like English or reading English books That's, or anything like that? I think MATC has a ESL. They do, yeah. but offer as uh, maybe not even programming. I'm mean, almost thinking more like something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and, and yeah. Who, who might come in, right. who could then be a facilitator right. or whatever, you right. know, so that we, we just offer the space. That's it right. It just happens here. Right. Well, I, I think space. That's it right. It just happens here. Right. Well, I, I think this connection <laughs> yes. is mm -hmm. what maybe in these families that we're getting connected to her, where we can ask those questions. Is there a need for that? What do they need? Yeah. <coughs> and then um, who would who would be the right person to fill those needs? You know. Yeah. Who would who would be the right person to fill those needs? You know. Or maybe something like, okay, it's tax time, right? Well, if any of these families need to file taxes, how do they do that? Could we provide people within their community to help them with that? Mm -hmm. Or you know, registering for school. Yeah, help them with that. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, registering for school next year. How do we do that? You know, that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. I mean, the school should be doing right. that. But I mean, just like life stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Cool. Very good. Thank you for <coughs> making that connection to Doris. Very good. Thank you for <coughs> making that connection to Doris. That's yeah. awesome. All right, um, foundation report. Oh, we have a date for the literary luncheon, October 10th. We have an author, Larry Watson. If you know him, he wrote Montana in 1948, which was a movie. Ooh. And he lives in Kenosha, hmm. or the Kenosha area. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, he's very excited about, Good. about being up here. And we're meeting with the Polish Center, I think, on Wednesday. Finalize the details, but I said pretty much just copy what we did last year. Yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. If we wanted Thursday, all our Thursdays were taken. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's the big news. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we will skip the colon report since Terry is not here. Um, finance committee meeting, or is that if necessary, or is that um, you're going to put something oh. out? Well, Terry's not here. I was. Oh, wondering. you guys. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. I'll just send a. I'll just send a doodle pull out. The pre-budget planning. Yeah, we're going to try and budget 2024, 25, 26, like we did in the past. We took the budget from the prior year and then added a percentage to it. Yeah. But with inflation being what it is, I think our prior budget wasn't all that accurate. We should probably start with. The actual from 2022. 
Mm-hmm. All right, and uh, Jennifer and Carrie have kind of requested a personnel committee meeting also, so we'll okay. be getting. Can you do it just a do a poll for that? I can do also, a do a poll if you unless prefer. we know right away. And do you know with Carrie? I mean, do you have Carrie's? Send it up. We'll yeah. schedule it. <laughs> just Carrie's. Send it up. We'll yeah. schedule it. <laughs> just, just so you know, I'm going to be in. I have to go to Florida for a few days. It'll be like March 8th through the 12th, and I'm doing the state by the 13th or 15th. So, so it'll be like towards the, the end of the month. The 13th are going to be, yeah. Okay. A through the 15th are going to be tough. So we'll yeah. just look at those last. I don't think it's. Yeah. Okay. A through the 15th are going to be tough. So we'll just look at those last. I don't think it's we, urgent. No. 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 It's so, not urgent. Okay. So yeah. I would try to do it um, after the 15th. And you're not going to be away for spring. Actually, I want to have the building and grounds committee, but I wanted the cleaning company to come in. But clean. can we do it in session so we can do it before there's somebody new mm-hmm. to the situation as opposed to yeah. someone with a lot of experience and knowledge <laughs> in the situation? Yeah. Early so April. I'll, I'll work around your schedule. But. <laughs> so okay. <laughs> All right. Not before 9 o'clock. <laughs> and then our next meeting is is March 27th. Is there anyone that knows already? I think that's spring break week for Franklin, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. What about the numbers? Oh, I'm sorry. Sure. Um, Go back to the at a glance. I always I feel like that's forget that that's so, separate from your report. So we have a lot of people using the library. Mm-hmm. Even though CERC was down a little bit over last year, I mean, our gate count last year, um, well, that's a good thing. And I yeah. think February is also, once we get the February numbers, I think we're going to be up. I came in a little bit later today because of the board meeting tonight, and the parking lot was full. Mm-hmm. I thought there was something going on, like a oh. big program. Yeah. Well, what's there going wasn't. Out? What's going on? That's book readers. club. But this was like at 1230. I'm just going to pretend they're all coming in between 9 and 10 in the morning. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I like to think that the earlier hours has helped, but but also I, I just, think people you know, are still getting used to it. It is. It is. But also I, I just, think people you know, are still getting used to it. It is, it is busy when I come in, though. Like, the story times have been... Yeah. Story and time I'm, numbers I'm are up. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> Story <laughs> time numbers are up. It doesn't how I once once it's warmer. It doesn't how I once once it's warmer weather. We won't be there. But it's a lot of All right. gloves and oh. jackets and <laughs> snow pants and we do walk. We don't um, numbers things. Story time numbers are up. I mean just programming numbers in general are up and the meeting room use numbers are up. So I think it's you know, just showing that they're different. Yeah. Pretty much. Great. Yeah. All right, great. I'd like what to is the motion to adjourn. Just a second. <laughs> nope, it can be a question for after the meeting. So I second that motion. I already did. Oh, oh sorry. Okay. <laughs> Annie and Alan, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.